Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for another episode of the Real House Housewives of Potomac, season eight, episode seventeen, and this is called Fashion um, Show Down. Uh, and we kind of know from the preview that I mentioned last week that this is where the infamous fight took place. There was a fight that occurred. And man, this is the second fight that this franchise has had, like that's been kind of, or the physicality it has happened. And I'm wondering and curious what they're going to do after this. Um, but this is kind of the episode that I ain't going to hold you. I feel like everyone's been waiting for because it seems like when it comes to a lot of the episodes leading up to this, they've just been dragging it. Um, so I would say for this particular episode, I actually enjoyed every single thing about the episode. It was probably one of the better episodes of this show thus far um, because it just didn't feel as forced. And <clears throat> although there were some separate scenes or also scenes that came together, it it was like all the other things leading up to it was giving snooze fest until this point. Same thing with even the Pave episode. That one was a good episode too. And then even the trip. But some of the other things that were just been in between has just been just giving nothing. Um, I do have a lot of opinions after reviewing this and watching this um, episode. I actually watched this episode twice because I actually enjoyed it enough where I can watch it more than once. Which is rare. Um, at least this season when it comes to Potomac. Um, but yeah. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. So the episode starts with your typical Housewives mini montage. And this should be a hint whether it's a good episode or not is when they have the montages. Because I know it's a lot past like couple episodes, they really haven't done that. But anyway, so this starts first with Wendy talking to her producers again regarding the pilot of her show. And then from there, they shift from there to seeing we see um, Karen and Ray at the cardiologist um, get going to a follow-up appointment about her heart. We find out things are improving. Um, not as much plaque within her heart. So she's doing whatever she's doing, she's doing right. Um, and then from there, we see Giselle and Ashley getting ready for the fashion show with Desmond, their designer. And then we go to our actual first Real Housewife scene where Ike and Aneka are... are I'm going to get the IUI procedure done. So, um, it was this was actually decent to watch. Um, outside of like Naneka not really being, I don't know what it is about her. Her personality just is kind of boring. And I don't know if it's just a bad edit based off of everything that she's done on the show so far, which you know, has not been good. She's led too much heavy into other people's business versus going to her own business first and us getting to know her or what. But like, this is an interesting topic, but it would be more interesting if it was with someone who was interesting. And I hate that I feel that way, but, and I also don't know if it's a bias that I have because of how she's been on the show, but I think it's a little bit of both. And Ike is, I feel like, is trying his best to make this entertaining, her husband, but he's not the housewife. She's the housewife. Um, anyway, so they're at the clinic, <laughs> and Ike has to do his thing to let, let, the, let the sperm go so that they can then, you know, inject that sperm into, into her, um, you know, area to get things going. So... I don't know why in the scene, I think she was talking to uh, Giselle because they show a flashback of her talking to Giselle about how it works. And it's, again, a great thing to watch because I never knew how it worked either. But one thing I did know is that him handling his business was not going to be romantic. <laughs> and she thought it was going to be like a porno in her head. It's like, no, the point is he needs to get to it put it in the cup, hurry up and, you know, make sure there's nothing else there that kills the, kills the little guys. Um, so basically make sure the oxidation doesn't hit it too much. And then it needs to go or it needs to go, you know? And so her expectation was very, I don't know what her expectation was, but <laughs> girl, I, I, 
I don't know why she didn't realize that it wasn't going to be what she thought it was going to be. And so fast forward, we see everything happen and it's done. Those shady producers made it seem like he was only in there for like five seconds. <laughs> and the camera crew, because we're seeing the camera crew and everything while they go into the restroom. Because she's in there to help him out, you know. But like, yeah. And also make sure he doesn't, you know, mix or anything. But then the day, I was confused too because he's like, can I use lotion? And the lady literally just said, you cannot use lotion. You cannot use certain things because you don't want anything to interfere with it. But for whatever reason, he was confused. And I'm just like, but you're a doctor. But I know it's not the same type of doctor. But anyway, so that pretty much concludes that scene. Next, we see Mia and Gorn at the therapist's office again for marriage counseling. And um, the marriage counseling, she's doing her check-in. She's first like, How, okay, what's going on with the D word? Um, and Gorn's just like, what, what, D, what D word, divorce? And they're like, yeah. And I don't know what it is about this, but this whole entire <laughs> scene... It was kind of uncomfortable to watch because Gordon is clearly delusional when it comes to his status with his relationship with Mia. And Mia is clearly checked out. It's And I don't know how he doesn't see it because I can see it. It's, it's clear as mud. So it was like she's kind of like there. I feel like she's going through the motions at this therapy office. But anyway. So, um... But Mia does say in her confessional that the first time she hired that divorce, divorce attorney, that Gordon actually emptied her bank account and left her with nothing. Um, all the way of kind of making her stay. And I believe that. I mean, there's a lot of things I don't believe from Mia, but that I do believe because Gordon does come off desperate on this show. Um, and... Also, to being the type of woman that Mia seems to be, even how she's presenting herself. And no, this is no shade. No one sold to Mia because I love Mia as a housewife. And actually, I've grown to really like her a lot. And her getting the first seat for the reunion, I gagged over it. But I was like, yes, that means they're trying to move this forward, this franchise forward and move it towards the future. Because she definitely is like all the things you need in a housewife. The right mind delusional. She'd be lying. Most housewives do. Um, being able to throw shade but forgive. She got handsy that one season, but she's learned from that clearly. And I feel like this is the season where we're seeing Mia is finally find, finding her footing. Even though the season overall has been lackluster, she's finding her footing. And she's been one of the pe people that's been so entertaining <laughs> to watch for me. Because... I mean, love her or not, you don't take her seriously all the way. Except for when there, it seems like there's points where you could tell where she's being serious. And that brings me back to this point. I think she was dead serious when she was talking about what Gordon did as far as like um, trying to hold Bunny over her head to stay in this. And because he knows what type of, because also he does know what type of woman he married. Anyway, so... From there, they go into the um, conversation about intimacy and the lack of romance. And they're just not on the same page. I think the problem is Mia. I wish Mia was kind of truthful about the money part a lot more. Because we know that's why she's leaving for real, for real. You know? But I think, though, if he had other components besides the money, like if he really was in if they spoke the same language when it came to like intimacy and romance and she even said it she's like i almost didn't marry him because the intimacy just wasn't there she kind of said it without saying it and honestly if the intimacy was there along with the money i think she would work with him if the intimacy was there but there's no intimacy and there's no money now why am i staying <laughs> i mean she doesn't need to say it, but I read in between it to understand that's where she's at. But at the end of the day, they're not on the same page. Next, we do see that, um, side note, I will also say this. This episode definitely felt like a season finale, and I think it was supposed to be originally because it was supposed to be not that great of a season. 
but then after things happened at the end of this there it's getting extended now but and in a weird way i think that might have actually saved the show we'll, we'll see i don't know what the aftermath of it is but i am that after seeing that i i want to know what happened after that but anyway because i didn't think they were going to air it but they kind of didn't air it but they you kind of get what happened there and well i'm skipping ahead but let's get back to it candace and the reason why i'm saying this feels like a re uh, a season finale because everyone's kind of getting their final their individual scenes um which is typical of a season finale and it usually ends with everybody getting together and a party and then the end and that's how this episode seems like it's leading until it doesn't. But anyway, I'm moving ahead again. Um, Candace meets with Dr. Ken therapist, um, her therapist at her house. So he makes a house call. And we've seen him before in previous seasons where um, Candace was basically having the counseling with her mom and trying to work through the dynamic of the, the mother-daughter relationship. But in this case, this is not what this is. Um, Candace is feeling overwhelmed and discussing trying to balance her career and having, you know, having a child. Um, and kind of just go a call back to her and Chris having that conversation and about, you know, resuming the process of having of IVF. And <clears throat> she confessed that she, it, in a long, long about way, she's, kind of just having a lot of apprehension like yeah the breast cancer thing is one thing but she really does tell the truth here a little bit more and like sh shares that that's one of the many reasons and now she's feeling like she's just adding excuse after excuse so i do i feel like i need to take back what i said to cr what i how i felt how chris responded to things because I did not, I still did not like how he responded in reference to how she felt about the breast cancer. But it sounds like even Candace took a step back and realized like, yeah, it's just one of the many excuses I'm using. And she literally just kind of confessed that that's what it is. And <clears throat> she's trying to have this career, but she's just at the same time, I can't, in her head, she's trying to figure out, can she do more than one thing at the same time? And clearly... The answer is yes. That's the reason why us as women are the ones who are bear, bear the children. Science proves we can do this. We're built that way. We're built to do more than one thing. That's just what it is. And love it or hate it, that's just what it is. And side note, I will also say this about this episode. This episode was very he heavy on the women empowerment. And also how toxic women are <laughs> could be towards the end. Anyway. So. <clears throat> she does stay. You know. she. So then the therapist. The doctor can ask like. So are you going to let fear di dictate what you really want to do. About you having children. And she breaks down. She's like. Yeah. That's what I've been doing. I've been letting fear do that. And he's like. In your heart of hearts. What do you really want to do? Do you really want to have this career this badly? Or do you want to have, do you want to be a mother? Do you want a child? She's like, I want to have a child. She finally just said out loud that she's like, I want to have the child. So this ther therapy session was just, just what she needed. She just needed reinsurance that she's making the right decision. And so she's going to talk to Chris and they're going to pursue. And we'll maybe next episode see her have that talk and figure it out. Or child or not, because... <laughs> <laughs> um anyway and it's based off of what i said before and i probably should have said at the very beginning of this video spoiler 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 i'm going to keep going back to the final scene and go back into it because the way <laughs> i want to know what happened afterwards this is one of the first times i'm like okay so what happened after this <laughs> anyway so um all the ladies um, one by one are meeting up at, um, I don't know where they were exactly, but they all meet up, um, for Mia. Mia got the girls together, which is why, side note, Mia is able to get the ladies together. And she was able to get them together to do something cool. Mia, I'm telling you, 
y'all gonna end up loving Mia. For those who still are not all the way on board with Mia yet, y'all gonna learn to love her. I feel like you are. I mean, all, a lot of Real Housewives are good Real Housewives. Not necessarily because they're a good person, but it's because they have all the components. And yeah, y'all gonna see it. I, I, she is winning me over. <laughs> I'm not going to hold you. She's winning me over. Anyway, but <clears throat> Mia has the ladies meeting them. And um, so, and all the ladies are there, my Seneca. And M Mia states that she met with the editor of Monarch Magazine, which is a local magazine in DMV. And for all the ladies to do a women's empowerment photo shoot and spread. And we do see a separate, we do see a scene where she's like calling, you know, they sh there's show a scene where she talks to Will, who is the editor of the magazine. But then we also see her, you know, calling some of the ladies, let them know like, hey, there's something going on and to meet up um, and kind of give them the news a little bit ahead of time. And um, she does talk to Naneka and tell them like, hey, I'm sorry, but you're not going to be included for this opportunity because they want people who have been in this community for a while, AKA a uh, current, like a more known housewife. Um, and according to Mia, she took it just fine. No big deal. Um, but then Mia does definitely shade her in the confessional. She's like, girl, you just got here. I'm sorry. Not sorry. No shade. <laughs> and it's just like, I mean, facts are facts. But anyway, Will does arrive and explain what they're doing and um, kind of go more into detail and give them all like a portfolio of what their what their assignments are. And the ladies are going to be doing an iconic women's spread. And so Candace is going to be Diana Ross in the spread. Giselle Beyonce. Um, Karen Lena Horn. Um, Ashley Dorothy Danders. Um, Mia Pam Greer, Wendy, um, <clears throat> Shirley, um, Ralph, and then Robin, Mariah Carey. And this was one of those rare moments where all the women were happy for each other. No one was shading each other. Everyone just seemed to be really cool and happy. And this is where I'm just like, dang, why can't this franchise just be like this where y'all move on and, you know, this is what it is. Because this is the kind of scene that I like. Like, where you guys are brought together. You guys forget about the BS and the petty beef. Because a lot of it is super petty. But the problem is, one of the people who are the pettiest just continues to perpetuate it without giving an apology. I feel like a lot of the issues that happen with this particular franchise... If a genuine apology would happen, as loud as the offense, by the way, they can move forward. But the problem is it's not happening. And therefore, no one's moving forward. But anyway, next thing. So next, we see um, Robin and Juan looking at office space for um, Glow 30 franchise. We, you know, um, Robin did say earlier that she wants to open a franchise to diversify her portfolio because, well, Juan is out of a job and also to... I mean, let's be real. Robin was on the chopping block as well when it came to this job. So, yeah, you need to parlay the Real Housewife money and your reasonably shady podcast into other things besides just a housewife's check. Because we know that's not forever. And also, too, Juan currently doesn't have a job. So they kind of are looking at the space. Um, we hear what Robin wants to do as far as the space is concerned. Juan does reach out, does talk and like say, hey, what about the budget? What are we looking at for budget here? And then that's when the lady that is showing them around, like I guess I'm assuming it's either the office space owner or the realtor. I don't remember what it said. Um, is breaking down what the price is going to be for the space. And... Um, this was one of those few moments, rare moments, where I feel like this was not foreseen. I feel like this is actually how Juan and um, Robin are actually in real life. I mean, let me know if I'm reaching, but I 
if you're to believe what Robin says that they're really best friends, this was probably the most genuine I've ever seen them be towards each other, and it didn't feel forced. Um, it felt like, okay, um, he's asking questions. He's like, I I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you doing this. And then he reads a quote that actually sounds like something profound, but the quote's literally on the wall. And so she kind of gets a good cackle out of it, but then she does state to him like, hey, um, I'm, I'm going to check in with Giselle real quick because um, she's having a family emergency. And Juan's like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry to hear that. Because keep in mind, Giselle and Robin, y'all know outside the show, they've known each other for other, they, they're actually true best friends in real life, very clearly. Um, Batman and Robin, right? And so <clears throat> um, Juan does excuse himself. It's like, I'm going to go to the restroom. Okay, you, you go ahead and talk to her. So she calls her to check in on her. And we find out from Giselle that her dad is sick and um, she is hanging in there, but she just is like, I didn't even know what was going on because her dad has been lying to her about how bad he was doing for like two weeks. She, she didn't know. And um, man, that's common in the black community. <laughs> it's so common. It, it's so common. I've had so many relatives that I didn't know that things were towards weren't going well until it was you had to say your goodbyes but it's so common um especially with what the element is that we find out but so the producers in the confessional does ask Giselle you know can you explain what's happening and Giselle is not ready to talk about it yet she's like next question and normally I will feel a way about Giselle doing that but at the end of the day, she is a human and I get it. And because I think I'm not sure how far away the confessionals are filmed after the show. Because since the show, her dad did pass away. So I would imagine I wouldn't want to talk about it. I wouldn't not on camera. Because I know it will fall apart. So, and Giselle and her personality, you know she doesn't like falling apart on camera. But this is one of those times where even love or hate Giselle, this is a time where I will allow grace. I, I, I no pun intended, because I know that's her, <laughs> that's literally her tag, that's her tagline, but, <laughs> and her daughter's name. But anyway, um, yeah, I, it's, it's tough. But we do find out from Robin and her confessional that he indeed has brain cancer. So, unfortunately, with her dad's age, even if I wouldn't have known the conclusion, I kind of knew. Yeah, that's an upward battle. It just is. And so... Basically, ever since she's gotten the news, Giselle's been going back and forth between Atlanta and, like, the Maryland area. And she does ex she does say that later on. But, I mean, we can might as well talk about it right now. And she basically states that she is out of it. and But she will, she will be at the um, GNA launch um, for her fashion show. But she's going through, she's literally autopiloting it. And it's something that a lot of us do, including me. Um, when I got a lot of like emotional stuff going on, I just, I either, <laughs> I either fall apart and do too much and not in a good way, um, which I haven't done that in, child, 15 years. I haven't reacted that way in like 15, oh, hell, almost 20 years I haven't reacted that way. That comes with maturity. Or what a lot of us do, including me, this day and age is bury yourself in work um for me that's always been in a weird way a trauma response i either bury myself in work or exercise like crazy um that's what i do now is either i exercise like crazy or i bury myself in work i of course prefer to exercise like crazy over the work but yeah but yeah i don't really have anything else to add to this though all right, so then next, we do see that Wendy's getting ready to film her pilot episode, and she is way over budget. 
The bu- the budget was supposed to be 25k and we see that Eddie actually gifted her 50k because yeah. <laughs> um the producers so the housewife producers asked her producer um how much over budget they were she wasn't even comfortable answering the question and i don't even know what it is either because like even though she got gifted that money i'm i want to know how much over budget they were but based off the pilot of the first episode yeah i saw where all that went <laughs> but i'm confused by it because well i okay let me take a step back step back share so now I understand why, and maybe they'll go into it during the show, why her show was on YouTube. I think with the pilot episode, she was actually trying to pilot it and shop it around to a network. So she probably overspent for that initial episode to try to get it to an actual TV show network. But now that she took a step back and is doing what she's doing now, which is a YouTube I imagine her budget isn't that budget now. She probably is doing just fine now. But that's because at first when I heard what the numbers were, I was like, why do you need, I mean, I guess the, the production engineer and all that, how much people do you have on a team? I guess I'm just trying to figure all that out. But even then, I'm still just confused on how bad did you go over budget. If you were to think that she went 75K. Because that's kind of why I thought that's what she did. But maybe she didn't spend all that 50000 So anyway, it just made me... I was doing the math. I was trying to figure out where the money was going. <laughs> I ain't going to hold you. I was, po- I was pocket watching. So anyway, um, the theme of the pilot was bl- bl- Black Girl Magic. Wow, I can't even speak right now. And in the pilot, she has April Ryan, who is a real... Um, Wow, uh, White House correspondent, Jasmine from the Jasmine brand, like the founder of Jasmine brand, which is, y'all know who that is, you know, y'all know about that. Um, um, Kiara Robinson, also, I guess, Nikki, or not Kiara, wow, Kiara Robinson, um, by the name Nikki um, Robinson, she is the CEO and founder of Black Girls Vote. And then um, Lindsay um, Granger, who is a TV host, journalist, and she's been a host of the Daily Blast Live and The View. And I will say this, the pilot definitely did seem dope. And um, in the pilot, they were talking about affirmative action, among other things, and just being women bosses and, um, you know, navigating that, but also being a mother, being a provider, and all that so it, it seemed cool and i'm hoping that this pilot episode will air on youtube at some point because i don't think it's out there i mean she did have a new episode out up this morning but i just didn't see what the episode was about yet and i have seen a couple of episodes i do want to go back and watch um, more of the episodes but i'll probably do that i don't know i have a little bit more time um but yeah so that's pretty much it for that all right so it is the day of the fashion show and the launch and Giselle and Ashley are both getting ready. Giselle states in her professional that, you know, she didn't really do much planning for this event because right when they were supposed to get this event together is when she found out that her dad was sick. So Ashley has basically picked up the ball and ran with it. So Ashley and Desmond has basically been the ones who made sure that this event took place. Um, and that's that on that. And Giselle feels super guilty about it. And I can tell she's being genuine here. She's like, I didn't do much. And I just feel bad that I couldn't do anything. And, you know, Desmond's like, this is a team. You know, that's part of being a team and working on this together. And, um, but at the end of the day, Giselle is an autopilot. And, you know, she does state that her dad would have wanted her to be there. Because her dad's always preached to her, business is business, so let's handle it. And it does seem like, because at first, when we heard about this GNA thing, I thought I thought they were doing this just for the show. I think they're really trying to do this for real, for real. Because sometimes in Real Housewife shows, you can never tell if they're doing this for a show or if this is like really what they're trying to do. And in this case, 
based off of what Giselle's saying, it seems like they are doing this for real, trying to do this venture. And I respect it. But anyway, so Karen arrives first and she does compliment Giselle in the confessional about her fashion's improving this year. And she's hoping that the fashions, her improvement in fashion has, is reflecting on the clothes that they're about to see. Um, fast forward, Karen just didn't seem to realize that this, the clothes are supposed to be athleisure. I was kind of confused by that. Um, but based off her shade, but her shade still was comical and hilarious. So it didn't matter. But anyway. So then um, Karen does check in on Giselle immediately once she's there. And, you know, Giselle's being honest with her. She's like, I'm not really doing well. But, um, you know, my um, dad is having surgery tomorrow. So I'm leaving right after this. Pray, pray for him. Pray for me. And Karen's like, say less. Um, let me know if you need anything. And you could tell that Karen and Giselle's relationship is a genuine friendship. Yes, they're frenemies, but at the end of the day, they care about each other. And we, we always knew that. And so um, Karen also gives us a little more observation and professional. She's like, yeah, I can see in Giselle's eyes she is not doing well at all. Her eyes are red. She's definitely been crying. She's not doing good. And... You know, we're not going to get Giselle saying she's being vulnerable because she still doesn't, she still, for whatever reason, doesn't like to do that or won't do that. Um, but we're getting it through others. Anyway. So then Wendy arrives there next. She says congratulations to everyone, including Giselle. She says, like, congratulations. She didn't say congratulations, Giselle, but she said congratulations. And Giselle was like, thank you. Um... Which, again, this, this is the thing that bothers me. <laughs> Y'all are able to talk to each other just fine right there. Why can't we just do that all the time? Because even Wendy went backwards in this episode towards the end. And I'm going to call it out. Even though I like Wendy, I'm calling it out. Um, but at the same time, I get where Wendy's co coming from. Cause she's like, I've been trying to be the bigger person for multiple seasons and I'm done with it. I get it. But being the bigger person a lot of times is not about the other person. It's about you. You don't want their poisonous behavior to leak onto you. If you still are always above it, whatever they do, that makes it very clear that it's on them. And this was one of those cases, I'll, I'm going to go ahead of time a little bit here, later on, where I'm just kind of like, Wendy, why couldn't you give a similar response as what Candace gave? Anyway. So then, <clears throat> all the ladies, pretty much all the ladies are arriving one by one. And all the ladies look good, minus Sharice. I don't know what Sharice is wearing. Also, Jacqueline, what she's wearing, I'm kind of like, hmm. But it's still cute. It's cute. It's still cute, cute, cute. Um, and then what Kiana's what Kiana's wearing, I'm like, ah, it's all right. But what I will say, Robin. Yes, ma'am. That outfit, she did that. She did that. That was some. Um, I'm claiming you again as an Aries. As a fellow Aries, I'm claiming you again because that outfit, girl, I loved it. I loved it. That all-white pantsuit with, with the um, crop top. Stop playing. Stop playing. And especially, we can tell this path between last season and this season. She's been working out, so the body's bodying. She looked like money here. This is one of those rare times where Robin was not looking all regular. She was. You did that. You did that. I, I give I give flowers when I need to give them. And I'm a sucker for a good pantsuit. For those who've watched Real Housewives Miami, you already know. I love me a good pantsuit on a woman. I love it. Be that androgynous, like. I'm, I'm still a woman, but I also got a pantsuit on. Oh my gosh, I love it. Love it. And also, Sheila's there too. So Ashley's mom shows up also. Um, 
congratulating her, surprising Ashley. Ashley didn't know she was going to be there. She's like, oh, no, I was not going to miss this. My, my baby girl having a fashion show? Oh, no, I'm coming to this. And Candace is there. Everyone's there. And then the shady producers, but they weren't wrong about it, make this like eh, 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 noise because Sesame Street is there. Deborah, also known as Deborah, Sesame Street is there and looking thirsty as ever. She's going, like, she just seems like she's literally barging in there like this. She's literally doing this. And then now she's doing this. Then she's going to, like, hug everyone. She's like, like that noise that you're hearing. That's how inappropriate of a hug she was giving. It was just like, to everyone. And like everyone that's on camera. And it was very awkward, very forced, very, <laughs> very thirsty. She, her, her throat had to be quenching just like mine right now. I need to get some water. But anyway, we're going to wrap up this review soon and then we're going to, you know, move along. But anyway, so <laughs> now Wendy's face to me was priceless. She, the, She's looking at this and she's like, child. <laughs> and I was just like, child. <laughs> For those who know me, a lot of people know I, that is one of the words I say a lot. I be saying child whenever I just see some foolishness, which unfortunately the world is a ghetto right now. So it's, I, I say it a lot. It's, it's, it's almost like saying like a lot. Child is like my other word because the foolishness be everywhere. And this was it right here too. And she's like, I'm not even surprised that Ashley invited her because Ashley's messy. But what kills me is, especially when we find out what happens later on, you want to sabotage your own event like that. That's wild that you try to sabotage your own event. Um, a event that's going to potentially make you money and income. Ashley sometimes just really be dumb. I, I, either that or she just really likes drama and mess more than like being stable and making money. I'm just kind of like, what is this? But anyway, um, so then among the people that um, Deborah is hugging, she goes to hug Wendy while Wendy's in the middle of a conversation with other people. I think there are Ashley's other Ashley's friends. Um, she's talking to them about something random and then she comes and just hugs her. But like the way she hugs her, it's in a way where Wendy can't block the hug. She basically it's in a way where Wendy cannot like if she was to like do this or anything like that, she would make a scene. So Wendy had to basically take the hug, but get, she basically kind of gave her a church hug back. Um, but what shady, com shady pr producers call Wendy out. Cause Wendy in the confessional is like, that's some fake ish, but then rewind the tape of her taking that hug. But it's like producers. I know you thought you ate there thinking you're being shady towards Wendy. I saw what it was. And Wendy was trying to not make a scene before the event even starts. Because if she would have reacted any other way, other than hugging her, that could have sabotaged the event and that could have been all the reasons why, you know, they're already trying to get rid of, they're, they're trying to ice out Wendy and I'm sure, and Wendy is very aware, aware of it. And I feel like Wendy at this moment, when she saw that Deborah was there, she's like, oh child, they're trying to set us up. <laughs> and they were, and not just you, clearly. Anyway. So from there, um, Mia, Sharice, and Jacqueline, we see them talking amongst each other, and they seem to be getting along just well again, so that's good. Kira, um, Kiana arrives, and then Robin does, as ever, all the ladies are finally seated, um, waiting, waiting for the fashion show to start. Um, Robin asks about the photo shoot, when we're going to see the photo, when they're going to see the photos, and Mia states that they're going to be having a, a release party in two days. So that's going to be the next event. 
And then the fashion show starts. And this fashion show, <laughs> it definitely wasn't workout clothes. I couldn't work on any of those clothes that they had up there other than the biker shorts. Although all of what we were seeing in this fashion show was definitely on the leisure side of athleisure, which I don't mind that. This is leisure of athleisure. Like I wear a lot of leisure of athleisure as well. So I get it. Pardon me. I get it. Um, so, but the ladies are just, sh are, are being shady while this is happening. Especially, well, Karen is at the very beginning. Karen's like, this does not look like workout clothes. This looks like club clothes. This, so she's shading Ashley more or less because it definitely, the clothes was definitely more like was something that I wouldn't wear any of that at the gym. None of it. Um, and then Candace and Wendy are just shading them to shreds because <laughs> comparing it to Alibaba, like Wendy's like, wait a minute. Cause, and, th and then producers roll the bean footage. One of the outfits that one of the design, one of the models was wearing was literally an outfit that Giselle gave Wendy so much hell for wearing when at the season, I think it was season six, season six, I think was the season where Wendy got her body done and is shading her. And she's like, it's literally the same outfit, same color and everything. <laughs> and she's like, imitation, I guess is a form of flat flattery, I guess. But anyway, fast forward. Even Robin throws a little shade too. She's like, this is definitely more leisure. Not really on the athletic side. Definitely more on the leisure side. But she's proud of Giselle. And so the fashion show went off without a hitch. There was actual fashions. Now, whether you thought it was fashionable or not is a whole other thing. But there were fashions. I mean, I'm sure it's fashions for somebody. Now that bodysuit, that body count suit or whatever that they had, that was cute. But I still wouldn't wear it to the gym. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie some of the outfits I would have worn I just wouldn't wear it to a gym <laughs> but anyway so Giselle has a floor she opens up and gives Ashley her flowers because she's like Ashley basically had to carry this whole entire thing on her back because you know Giselle's like I have you know I'm having issues with my family right now so I haven't been able to do what I need to do but Ashley has done that and this proves that this partnership I chose the right partner for this partnership so to me it seems like this was more of um was this I wonder if this was more of Giselle's idea it seems like it could be because Giselle's done other entrepreneur type things before so I could see it but anyway um they toast um wait so from from there Mia actually goes and talks to the rest of the ladies while Giselle I think is talking to other people and Mia's really just talking to, I think it's Karen, Kiana, um, Wendy, and Candace. Because Mia is also another bridge that we're not, we don't, we didn't realize she was a bridge also, but she actually kind of is a bridge. Now she's shady about it, but she's still a bridge. She's more of a bridge than, honestly, she's more of a bridge than Ashley is. To be honest. I mean, let's call a thing a thing. She is more of a bridge. Um, because Mia doesn't really have real beef with anyone for real. Because Wendy has forgiven her. It's very clear Wendy has forgiven her. And Mia has apologized to Wendy more like a couple times. Um, so they've clearly have passed that up. Because the issues that they have from Miami hasn't really came back up again. But anyway. So um, Mia states that Giselle is going through a lot. And... I think Mia's trying to get the ladies to rally around um, Giselle, despite how Giselle has been acting. And Candace basically states, you know, I it's okay to wish people well from a distance. And at this point, I'm wishing Giselle and her family well from a distance. And that's where I'm at. And that's all I got for you. And Wendy agrees but then she adds more to it that to me, and this is where I'm going to get you, Wendy, this was unnecessary. 
this was unnecessary. You did not need to add an extra speech about what happened with your mom while you were in like Texas. Because we still don't know the severity of what happened with your mom in Texas because you didn't really tell the group like that for real, for real. Or if you did, it wasn't on camera. So we don't really we don't really have a context to that. But your con but honestly, in true context, it is apples to oranges because yes, your mom had an elective surgery. And we find out later on, and you found out later on that that was an elective surgery, but it was a side effect of an elective surgery. But she chose that. Versus Giselle having Giselle's dad having brain cancer. So Apples and oranges. And to me, I did not like this. I, I know you don't see it for her. But at the end of the day, you could have just kept just you should just simply agreed with what Candace said and kept it cute. There was no reason to add anything else to it, to, in my opinion. Like. Like you could you should have taken the high road <laughs> and Candace to me, she took the highest of high roads and Candace really has just as much of a reason to not be cool with Giselle ever again. And she isn't because Giselle really messed up things for her family and hasn't really apologized and continues to double down on it and everything else. But Candace approach in this occasion to me was the correct approach. Say, Hey, I understand that I'm compartmentalizing and I, I wish her well from distance salute. And that's how what how you should have handled that as well. I felt I felt a way that gave me the ick. I ain't gonna hold you. So, <clears throat> so after this, the ladies are all, you know, by the couch wherever, because there was a couch area that everyone's sitting at. They all toast and then the partying starts. And they're playing some mm, 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 house music. House music. House music. House music. Sorry, <laughs> I was about to get to it. I mean, you know, we like house here in the city now. But anyway, they were playing house music, too. And so Giselle leaves early um, because she has to catch an early flight. And child, this is where the mess starts. But we don't see it. We only hear it. Um, the fourth wall is broken where I think it was Ashley because it sounded like Ashley asking, are the cameras down now? And the cameras are down, but the mics are still on. So this is hot mic time. And I know a little bit more what happened here because I saw what happened before the season. And I didn't think they were going to film this. And if clearly they didn't because for one, the cameras were down. But there was footages that got caught on the camera. So I'm wondering in the next episode, are we going to see someone's camera phone of what happened? Um, cause I don't know who filmed it, but maybe the person who filmed it was not a Bravo person. I don't know, but what ends up happening here is that Deborah goes, beelines it to, um, Candace and will not leave Candace alone. You can hear in the footage that she is not leaving her alone. You know how abrasive Deborah was this whole entire, like, um, seeing She's much worse here, but with Candace. But Candace was like, she's like, you you call me a Sesame Street character. You never said it to my face. You never said it to my face. And Candace is like, get the help away from me. I'm not talking to you. Get the help away from me. So Candace is trying to go away with go, go away with me with this is basically what Candace is saying. And Deborah will not stop trying to confront her. And then Kiana steps in. She's like, this is not the time or place. This is not the time or place. And I think we even hear Ashley or someone else even said this is not the time or place. Like there's other people that are trying to deescalate. It wasn't just Kiana. Um, there's someone else saying, stop it. This isn't it. And then I know where you hear the yelling, like, stop it, stop it. And that's where the episode ends. Now, for those who haven't seen what happened yet, a fight broke out, broke out. A physical altercation broke out. And from what we're hearing here, and also to what I saw, Deborah started the whole thing. And also, for those who didn't know, Kiana is an official friend of, by the way. 
but she doesn't have an official picture as a friend of because that photo shoot of this season happened was happening after this was supposed to happen after this so and hopefully we'll see what happened with that in the next episode but that's all i know um i'm under the impression kiana got hurt in this physical altercation because i think she was also involved um i don't really remember because this happened um this happened back in like the fall when they when this when the filming was supposed to wrap up but didn't um clearly because this was not the season finale and i think this originally was supposed to be the season finale um which would have been tragic because this was a not good season and anyway but that does conclude the review i am excited to see what happened next week um yeah this was a good episode this was a good episode i am not gonna hold you i was actually i saw this i i told you i saw this episode twice this was good but anyway please like comment subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content it's your girl sharon aka the Mel nostalgic runner and i will see you next time bye